Hey everyone, today we're going to give some examples of trigonometric equations. Something a little different about trigonometric equations is that they're going to end up yielding a lot of different solutions. In this first example, we'll solve the equation 3 times tan squared of x minus 1 times tan squared of x minus 3 is equal to 0 over the interval 0 to 2 pi. And when I say 0 to 2 pi, I'm saying that our solutions x should come from positive angles in the unit circle. Now going back to the equation at hand, I know it looks like there's a lot going on here, but what we realize is that we have a product of two different things that all equal to zero. So if we find values of x that make the left product or the right product equal to zero at any given time, then we can add those values of x to our solution set. So what I'm going to do is zoom in on 3 times tangent squared of x minus 1, set it equal to zero, and then try to find solutions of x for this small equation. What I'll do is start trying to solve for tangent squared of x, and then I will take the square root of both sides to get that tangent of x comes out to be plus or minus 1 over the square root of 3. So the goal now is to figure out which angles we can input to theta to get plus or minus 1 over the square root of 3. Since tangent is equal to sine over cosine of x, it turns out that if cosine of x is equal to plus minus root 3 over 2, and sine of x is equal to plus minus 1 over 2, tangent of x will then equal to plus or minus 1 over the square root of 3. So this is because plus minus 1 half divided by plus minus root 3 over 2 is equal to plus minus 1 over root 3. The unit circle will tell us that the x values giving us these answers for cosine and sine are the values pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. So we're about halfway done. We've determined when 3 tangent squared of x minus 1 is equal to 0. So now we need to determine when tangent squared of x minus 3 is equal to 0. So set tangent squared of x minus 3 equal to 0. When we solve for tangent, we get that tangent of x is equal to plus minus square root of 3. And tangent of x equaling to plus minus square root of 3 happens when cosine of x is equal to plus minus 1 half and when sine of x is equal to plus minus root 3 over 2. Therefore, the unit circle is going to give us the additional solutions, pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. So just to recap everything that happened here, my equation on the left-hand side was a product of two different quantities. We take each of those quantities, set them equal to 0, and then solve for x individually. And then we just collect the solutions that we get from both equations, and then that's going to give us our full solution set. It's often a good strategy to see if we can get an equation as the product of two things on one side and zero to the other side, because if you can break things up into smaller equations, it's generally an easier problem to handle. For our next example, we'll solve the equation secant x times cosecant x is equal to 2 times cosecant x on the open interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. This means that our solutions will be coming from the right half of the unit circle. Before we get started, I need to remark that we can't just divide both sides by secant squared because when you do that, you actually end up losing solutions. So what we'll actually do is a little bit more clever. We're going to take the entire original equation and we are going to subtract 2 cosecant x from both sides so that I have secant x times cosecant x minus 2 cosecant x is equal to 0. So instead of dividing both sides by cosecant x, what I can do is realize that since there is a cosecant x in each term, I can factor cosecant x out to get the revised equation cosecant x times secant x minus 2. Therefore, I'm in the situation again where I have a product of two things equaling to 0. Now all I need to do is set each individual component equal to 0 and then solve for x to get my solution set. When I set cosecant x equal to 0, I realize that this means that I'm looking for values of x such that 1 over sine of x is equal to 0. But this actually has no solutions. Since sine of x is in the denominator, it cannot force the entire fraction to equal 0 in any situation. Therefore, cosecant of x has no solutions. Next, we'll set secant x minus 2 equal to 0, which means that we're looking for values of x such that secant of x is equal to 2. Well, secant of x is just 1 over cosine, so now I'm looking for values of x such that cosine of x is equal to 1 half. 
Before I jump to the unit circle, I need to observe the restrictions on my solution set. I'm looking for solutions from the interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, which is the right half of the unit circle. So the solutions that I end up getting from this are x equaling to plus or minus pi over 3. Notice that when I evaluate cosine of x at plus or minus pi over 3, I end up with positive values in the x-coordinate, which corresponds to the right half of the unit circle. Therefore, I can conclude that my solution set to this equation is x equals to negative pi over 3 and positive pi over 3. For our next example, we're going to solve the equation tangent of 3x is equal to the square root of 3 on the interval 0 to 2. So we're evaluating tangent at 3 times x, and we could use some painful trig identity, but a more efficient thing to do is to take 3x and set it equal to theta. This will make the computations a little bit easier, but since x is in the interval 0 to 2 pi, theta equals to 3 times x is going to be in the interval 0 to 6 pi. Since we're multiplying 3 by x, we have to multiply the endpoint to this interval for this substitution to make sense. And looking at 0 to 6 pi, you can think of that as just traveling around the unit circle three times instead of once. This is ultimately going to give us rise to more solutions. So moving forward, we know that tangent of theta is equal to the square root of 3, when cosine of theta is equal to 1 half and sine of theta is equal to root 3 over 2, or when cosine of theta is equal to negative 1 half and sine of theta is equal to negative root 3 over 2. In other words, we need the x and y coordinates in our ordered pairs to have the same signs. This is what's giving us a positive value for tangent of theta. So our first solutions to when this happens would be theta is equal to pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. But we have to make sure we're accounting for the proper number of revolutions around the unit circle. So I will add 2 pi to both of these angles to give us two new solutions of 7 pi over 3 and 10 pi over 3. And then going around the circle a second time, I add 4 pi to these first two numbers to get new solutions of 13 pi over 3 and 16 pi over 3. So we're not quite done. Our answer is in terms of theta, but we want our answer to be in terms of x. Since theta is equal to 3x, x is equal to theta over 3, so all I need to do is divide each of these solutions by the number 3 to get that x can be pi over 9, 4 pi over 9, 7 pi over 9, 10 pi over 9, 13 pi over 9, or 16 pi over 9. And this is our full solution set. In this last example, we'll see another example where to use substitution. We're going to solve the equation 4 cosine squared of x minus 4 cosine of x is equal to 1 on the interval 0 to 2 pi. The first thing I'll do is I'll rewrite this equation so I have everything on one side, then 0 on the other. So I'm just subtracting 1 from both sides. And then I realize that I have 4 times something squared minus 4 times something to a power of 1 with a constant term. And this is actually a pretty familiar form. What we have here is a quadratic. So what I'm going to do is take cosine and set it equal to u. Once we write in the substitution, we're getting the equation 4u squared minus 4u minus 1 is equal to 0. And we can solve this simply by using the quadratic formula, which tells us that u has to be equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 2 for 2. And since u is equal to cosine of x, it tells us that cosine of x must be equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2. Now these next steps would need a computer to solve, as we can't do it by hand but we find that cosine of x equaling to 1 plus the square root of 2 over 2 has no solutions, but cosine of x equaling to 1 minus the square root of 2 over 2 has two solutions. And these come out to be x approximately equals minus 0 0.21 and x approximately equals 1.12, where both of these answers are in radians.